Good morning, Paradise Missionary Baptist Church. It is a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Thank you for joining us this morning. Would you please stand for the morning devotion and scripture reading? Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf shall also not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the shape which the wind driveth away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. And I have read Psalms 1 in its entirety. And may the Lord have a blessing in the hearers and the doers of his word. And at this time, could you please bow your heads for a moment of prayer. O most gracious Heavenly Father, as we come to you this morning with a gratitude and attitude of thanks, we would just like to collectively say thank you, Lord, for another day. Thank you, Lord, for making a way. Thank you, Lord, for continuing to be good. Thank you, Lord. You are so good to us. O oh, most gracious Heavenly Father, we just thank you for one more day. We just thank you for one more hour. We just thank you for one more minute and one more second just to uplift and lift your holy name. Father God, we ask you at this time that you bless this country, bless this state, bless this city, bless this community, bless each and every individual in the United States of America, bless each and every individual in this world today. We stand in need of prayer today. We stand in need of your blessings. We are in the middle of a crisis. We are in the middle of a pandemic. We are in the middle of a financial ruin, and we're asking you this morning that you bless us, Lord. We're asking you this morning that you keep us, Lord. We're asking you this morning that you do what only you can do to make things right. Father God, as we come here this morning, we're asking you that you bless our church. Father God, we ask that you continue to strengthen our church. Father God, we're asking that you continue to strengthen the membership of the church, continue to bless and continue to keep and continue to hold each member of Paradise Missionary Baptist Church. Father God, as we come here this morning, we ask that you bless our pastor. We ask that you bless his wife. We ask that you bless his family. We ask that you bless his children. We ask that you bless him and you deliver and you help him deliver his message that he's going to deliver to the congregation this morning. Father God, we ask that you continue to bless us, continue to keep us, continue to hold us, and we ask in you this, in my darling and my son Jesus' name, we pray, amen. Well, hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. I don't know about you, but I'm excited to be in the land of the living one more time. Hallelujah. For this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. For God is a good God and he is worthy to be praised. Come on, put your hands together. Open up your mouth and tell him you love him on today. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for being kind. We thank you for being faithful. We thank you for being a good God to us. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Anybody glad that you serve a good God on this morning? A faithful God, a God that is just. Hallelujah to your name. We're going to start a service on this morning with praise and worship, but I just wanted to, to just mention to you that you do serve a good God. No matter how hard it gets, no matter how rough it is, no matter how many times you want to throw in the towel, God is still good and he reigns on the throne. Repeat after me. Say, you are good. You are good. good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are good. You are Come on, come on. We can do that better than that. We can do it better than that. Say, you are good. You are good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
You are good. Now, if you serve a good God, put your hands together. If you serve a good God, come on and think about the goodness. Think about what he's done for you on just this week. How he's kept you. How he has lifted you up. How he has made a way out of no way. Hallelujah. It's a really simple song. We're going to repeat, you're going to just repeat these words. You are good. Hallelujah. You are good. It's a really simple sentence. It's a really simple line. And to the believer, to the child of God, if you say it over and over again, you'll easily start to think about his goodness and then you'll start getting happy on the inside. Hallelujah. It's really simple. Yes, sir. Oh, it's really simple. You are good. Hallelujah. You are good. It's a true story. You are good. Hallelujah. You are good. I'm going to do it again. You are good. <laughs> Hallelujah. You are good. Anybody believe that? You are good. Hallelujah. You are good. We got it. Come on, help me say it. You are good. Say you. Come on, lift that up with us this morning. You are good. You yeah. Are yes, you are. Good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. You are good. Come on, let's go. You are good, say. You are good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are good. You are good. You are good, say you. Come on, declare that this morning. You are, you are good. Let's go. You are good, say. You are good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are good. Are good. If it's good, come on, declare it. You are good, say. Let's declare it. You are good, say. You are good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are good. You are good. Hey, you are good, say. You are Every day, good. every hour. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You, are good. you are good. Everybody put your hands together. Put your hands together. You're good. And your mercy endure it forever and ever and ever. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh, taste and see. Come on, let's lift it up, paradise. Stand on your feet and do it with us. You are good, say. You are good. Hallelujah. Every day, every minute, you every hour, are good. we serve a good God. Hallelujah. You are good. You are good. You are good. Say. You are good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are good. You are good. And you saved my soul. Save saved my soul. My we shout hallelujah. hallelujah. You are good. You, you saved my soul. Save yes, you did. Yes, you did. Hallelujah. hallelujah. You are good. You are good. And you changed my life. Say, change my life. Change my life. I'll never be the same. Hallelujah. 
you are good. Yes, you did. You changed my life. Say, yes, you did. Yes, you did. Hallelujah. You are good. You saved my soul. Yes, you did. You made me whole. Hallelujah. You are good. You are good, say. Hallelujah. 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 That's the highest praise. Hallelujah. You are good. You are good. Hallelujah. You are good. Come on, right now in this moment, lift up your hands and just think about the goodness of the Lord. Think of the ways that he made. Think about where you should have been and where you are right now. Come on and think about the grace of him. Think, you of the, think about the mercy that he has granted us. The fact that he looked beyond our faults and still saw every one of our needs. The fact that in a word of calamity, he can give us a sense of peace. For that, we declare it. You are you're good <laughs> hallelujah you are good come on let me praise team you are good you are good come on help us declare that this morning hallelujah. let the redeemer of the lord say so you today if he's good lift it up you are good say you yes you are, are yes you are good. hallelujah you are, good. you are good. He inhabits the praises of his people. You are good. You yes, you are. are Let that be your declaring on the day. Let that be your prayer on this you morning. Whatever I go through, I'm going to declare you're good. You no matter how hard it gets, I'm going to declare that you're good. Hallelujah. You are good. You are Let's do it one more time. You are good, say. You are good. I'm going to declare it. Hallelujah. You are good. You are good. No matter what, it looks like you're good. You yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are good. You are good. Somebody shout. Shout with the voice of triumph. Oh, clap your hands, all ye people, and shout with the voice of triumph. You are good, say. You are good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are good. You are good. Hey. You are good. Hallelujah. You are good. You know, sometimes you might be having a tough week. You might be going through some battles, some trials in your life. But you know that life and death is in the power of the tongue. So if I keep my mind stayed on Jesus, I know that he'll keep me in perfect peace. If I keep his name on my lips, <laughs> my problem has to eventually move around. Let that be your prayer on this week. No matter what comes your way, I challenge you to be steadfast in the, in the word of God and declare it. You are good. Hallelujah. You are good. If he's good, come on and put your hands together. If the Lord is good, come on and lift up your voice and tell him, thank you for being good. Thank you for being faithful. Thank you for being just. Father God, thank you for being present in my life. Thank you for not leaving me, for never forsaking us. And for that, we declare that you're just good on today. It's not a cliche. It's true. Hallelujah. Lord, you've been so good to me. Is that anyone's testimony on today? Can anyone declare that you've been good? 
Lord, you've been good to me. Yes, you have. Yes, you have. Hallelujah. You've been good, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, you are good. You've been so good. Lord, you are good. You've been better than good. I can't thank you enough. I owe you my life. I can't praise you enough. Even if I tried, cause you've been, hallelujah, so good to me. Come on, lift it up. Lord, Lord, you are good. You, you've been so good. Oh, yes, you have. Lord, you are You've been better than good. You've been better than good. I can't praise you enough. I owe you my life. I owe you my life. I can't praise you enough. Even if I tried. Anybody ever been there? Because you've been so good. To me. to me, oh Lord, Lord, you, you are, are good. You've been so good. Been so good. Oh yes, you have, Lord. Lord. You are good. You've been better than you good. Been better than good. I can't praise you. Enough. I owe you my life. I owe you my life. I can't praise you enough. Even if I try. Yes, sir. Because you've been so good to me. Oh, yes, you have. Oh, Lord. You've been so good. Yes, you have. When I look over my life and I think things over. Yeah. I owe you my life. So good, so good to me. To me. Oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, Lord, you are good. You've been so good. Yes, you've been good to us. And we're grateful. Oh, thank you, Lord. I owe you my life. I can't praise you enough. Because you've been so good, you've been so good. Has the Lord been good to anybody? So good, you've been. Lord, you've been good. You've been so good to me. Come on, you ought to stand up on your feet and lift that up with this. Oh, so many doors. So many, doors so many ways you so made. Many ways hey. you so made. many times you so healed me. You Has God been better than you? Has God been good? So many doors. I can't think of the ways. So many times you healed me. Hey. You've been better than good to me. So many doors you opened. So many ways you made. I can't think of the time. You've been better than good to me. So many doors. So many ways. I can't count the time. You've been better than good to me. So many doors. So many ways you made. So many times you healed my body. You've been better than good to me. So many doors you opened. So many ways you made for me. So many times. You've been better than good to me. You've been better than good to me. You've been better than good to me. You've been better than good. Any witnesses in the house? You've been better than good to me. Been better than to myself. 
You've been better than good to me. Yeah, you've been better than good to me. You've been taking care of me. You look beyond my fault. And you saw every one of my needs. You've been better, you've been better, you've been better. Better, 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 better. Oh, yes, you have. Oh, thank you, Lord. Because it could have been another way. It could have been another way. I should have been dead. Sleeping in my grave. But you made old death behave. You made old death behave. I should have been in a jail cell. I should have been in a hospital bed. COVID should have took me out. Yeah, you've been, you've been so good. Oh, Lord, you've been, you've been so good. You've been so good. So good. I dare you to think about the challenges you've had. I dare you to think about the trials that you've overcome. I dare you to think about the mountains that tried to stop you. He's been good. Oh, thank you, Lord. You've been so good to me. You've been good to me. Yes. Oh, yes, you have. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You've been. You've been so good. Come on, come on. How many know that God has been good? Come on, how many of you are thankful that God has been good? So many doors that he's opened. So many ways that he's made. So many times that he's healed us. He had just been good, but the song said he's been better than good. That means when I just begin to look back over my life, and when I I begin to reflect and see what God has brought me from, all I can do is just tell him, thank you, God, you've been good. Thank you, God, you made a way. Thank you, God, you kept me when it could have gone another way, when I could have lost my mind. When all hope was gone, the Lord's been better than good to me. Come on, I need about three or four witnesses that know if you know that you know that you know that God's been good to you. Right there in your living room, right here in the sanctuary. I dare you just to open your mouth and give God some praise in this place. Come on, he's been good. I said he's been good. I said he's been good. And he wasn't just good today, but he was good yesterday. He was good the day before that. He was good the day before that. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. Great is the... My, 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 my. See, I I don't know about you, but I, I can't speak for nobody else. But see, when I begin to think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, I don't care who's looking, I don't care who's watching, I don't care what you might think about me, but I know that my soul cries out, hallelujah. I wish I had somebody who came to have some church today. Come on, come on, somebody who know that God's been good. Some of y'all don't even deserve to be here right now. Some of y'all should have been cut off a long time ago. Some of us shouldn't even be here, but because of God's grace, and his mercy, and his faithfulness, and his kindness. He has been right there with us 24-7. I owe him a praise. I owe him a hallelujah. I owe him a thank you, Jesus, because he's been just that Oh, yeah, he's been good. Come on, you ought to praise him right there. 
Come on, you ought to praise him right there. Here you are, the first Sunday in March 2021. You could have been a part of that over 500,000 folk who ain't here right now. But God saw fit to keep you right here. Come on, you ought to give him glory. Yes. Come on, sir. Come on and bless him. Come on and bless him. Praise him today, church. He's worthy. He's worthy. Yes. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Yeah. Open your mouth and say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Open your mouth and say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Open your mouth and say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Open your mouth and say yes, Lord. 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 To your will. Yes, Lord. To your way. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Open your mouth and say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Open your mouth and say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Open your mouth. Say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Open your mouth and say yes, Lord. 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 Yes, Lord.
He's good. 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 Taste and see. He's good. Oh, taste and see. He's good. He's good. He's good. He's good. He's good. I don't know about y'all. I feel the presence of the Lord all in this place right now. My God, my God. He's here. He's, I, I don't know what it is you're looking for, but whatever it is you're looking for, he's here. Those of y'all who are watching, I don't know what it is you're looking for. I don't even care what it is you're looking for, but know that he's right. Just the same God that's right here in this place is in your place. The same God that's in this house is in your house. The same anointing that's flowing right here in the sanctuary is flowing right there in your personal sanctuary. You ought to just reach out and just receive the anointing. Let the rain fall. Let the drops fall. Let the Holy Spirit have his way in your life. My God, my God, my God. My God, my God, my God. Lord, have mercy. He said, enter his gates with thanksgiving. And into his courts with praise. <laughs> he said, be thankful unto him. And bless his name. Why? For the Lord is good. I said the Lord is good. Y'all done started something. I said for the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his truth endureth not to some generation, but to... And I already told y'all, all is all. In the Hebrew... All means all. In the Greek, all means all. Whatever language you look up and study, all still means all. That means there's nothing on the left side of all. There's nothing on the right of all. There's nothing in front of all. There's nothing behind all. All is all. Oh, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Oh, my God. Whew, Jesus. I'm, 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 I'm. Ah. I'm supposed to be here welcoming everybody and getting ready to partake in the Lord's Supper, but I'm sure by now y'all should already feel welcome. I'm sure by now you already know to like and comment and share. I'm sure by now, by now you already know to be active in the worship experience. I, I know y'all, you already know that. You already know that. All right, y'all, y'all, okay, all right, okay. All right, okay. Oh, my, my God, my God, my God. Mm. Yes, 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 God. Yes, yes God. God yes. We say yes to you, Father. We say yes to your will. Yes, we say yes to your word. We yes, say yes to your way, God. Yes, my, yes, Lord, Lord. Yes, Lord. When his spirit speaks to me, with my whole heart, I'll agree. And my and answer, my answer will, be will be yes, yes. Lord, yes. Lord, does anybody have a yes in your spirit I'll today? I say yes, Lord, yes. I say to yes your to your will, will and to your way. I say, I yes. say yes, Lord, yes. I will trust you and obey. When your spirit speaks to me, with my whole heart I'll agree. 
and my answer will be yes, Lord, yes. Oh, I'll say yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your way. I'll say yes, Lord, yes, we will trust you and obey. When your spirit speaks to me, with my whole heart I'll agree. And my answer will be yes, Lord, yes. I'll say yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your way. I'll say yes, yes Lord, yes, I will trust you and obey. When your spirit speaks to me, with my whole heart I'll agree. And my answer will be yes, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. We love you, Jesus. Amen. As we come to this time, as we prepare to partake in the Lord's Supper, as the deacons are preparing to come now, I want to read a passage of Scripture from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 27 through 34. New King James translation says, Therefore, Whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this reason, many are sick, weak and sick among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened by the Lord, that we may not be condemned with the world. Verse 33, therefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, wait for one another. But if anyone is hungry, let him eat at home, lest you come together for judgment. And the rest I will set in order when I come. Shall we pray? O most gracious and eternal God, our Father, God, how we bless your name today. Father, how we thank you so much for your presence and your power resonating in this place. Now, Father, I pray right now as we prepare to partake in this Lord's Supper, God, that you would be with us, Father. Lord, I pray that if there's anything in our hearts that should not be, God, I pray that you would forgive us. I pray that you would cleanse us, O God. And Lord, I pray that if there's any unconfessed sin, God, we want to come right now repenting and asking you to forgive us, Father. We want our hearts to be right and pure before you as we prepare to embark upon this serious time in the life of every believer. Father, we love you and we thank you and we praise you. It's in Jesus' mighty name we pray that all God's people say amen. 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 I know that many of you have already been served, but what we want to do at this time as we prepare, we're going to have our deacons, so those who have not been served here, we're going to have our deacons to serve those people. And we'll go ahead and partake in the elements of the Lord's Supper. Amen? Amen. Amen. The blood that Jesus us shed for me. Oh, way back on Calvary, the blood that gives me strength. From day to day, it will never lose its power. It suits my doubt. And calms my fears, and it dries all of my tears, 
and drink dries all my tears. The blood, the blood that gives me strength from day, from day. Strength. That gives me strength. Oh, thank you, Lord. From day, From day, day, day it will never, it will never yeah, lose its power. its power. Amen. Has everyone been served? Amen. Oh, it was on the same night that our Lord and Savior Jesus was betrayed, if you could stand all those who were able. It was on the same night that our Lord and Savior Jesus was betrayed. And the Bible says, after he had given thanks, he took the bread and broke it and said, take and eat in remembrance of me. Let us all eat. And it was in the same manner that he took the cup. And he said, this cup represents my blood in the new covenant, which shall be shed for you. Take and drink in remembrance of me. Let us all drink. For as often as you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. If you would pass your cups to the middle aisle, someone will come around and collect them. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood for me. One day when I was lost, he died upon the cross. I know it was the blood for me. Oh, I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. Yeah, yeah, I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood for me. One day, one day when I was lost, he died. He died yeah, I know it was the blood for me. He's coming back again. He's coming. Oh yes, he's coming back. I believe it. He's coming back again. Just for me. One day, one day when I was lost, he died. Come on, put your hands together. Yeah. I feel a breakthrough coming your way. Yeah. It's a mighty move of God. It's going to change your day. Signs and wonders, miracles to perform. God is going to bless you. For just holding on, I feel, I feel coming your way. Coming yes, your sir. Way. It's a mighty move of it's God. Move it's going to change your day. Signs and wonders, Signs and miracles, wonder. to miracles to perform. God is going to bless you for just holding on. Just holding on. Oh, I feel, I feel coming your way. Coming your way. It's a mighty move of God. 
is going to change your day. Signs and wonders, miracles to perform. God is going to bless you, but just holding on. Just hold on. Change is coming. I feel it in the air. In the atmosphere. Just hold on. Change is coming. Yeah. A move of God. Let's do it again. Just hold on. Just hold on. Change is coming. I feel it in the air. In the atmosphere. Just hold on. Change is coming. A move of God. Oh, and you've been expecting a change in your life, yeah. Looking for your midnight to turn the sunshine. You know what? It's going to happen. You wait and see. All things are possible for them that believe. You've been, you've been expecting a change in your life. Looking for your, for your midnight to turn the sunshine. Turn the sunshine. It's going to happen. Gonna you, happen. Wait you wait and see. All things are possible things for those possible. that believe. Let's do it again. You've been expecting a change in your life. Looking for your midnight to turn the sunshine. Children of God, it's going to happen. You just wait and see. You wait and see. All things are possible for them that believe. Just hold on, just hold on. Change is coming. I believe it. I feel it in the air. In the atmosphere. Just hold on. Change is coming. A move of God. Yeah. Just hold on. A change is coming for you. I feel it in the air. It's in the atmosphere. Just hold on. A change is coming. A move of God. A move of God is on the way. I know that. I know that. A move of God. A move of God is on the way. The harder the trial, the bigger the blessing. He wouldn't put more oil than you can bear. A move of God. I'm going to trust in the Lord until I die. A move of God is on the way. I'm going to look to the hills from which cometh my help. A move of God is on the way. All of my help, all of my help comes from the Lord. A move of God is on the way. I'm going to lean and depend on your word. A move of God is on the way. Hey, a move of God. A move of God is on the way. I'm gonna trust in your Lord until I die. Move of God is on the way. It might be hard, it might be rough. Move of God is on the way. But I'm gonna hold on. Move of God hey. is on the way. I'm gonna hold on. A move of God, a move of God. A a move of God is on the way. A move of God is on the way. Oh, thank you, Lord. Yes, sir. If you believe that, come on and put a clap on it. Can you put a clap on it today? Let's lift that up one more time. A move of God. A move of God is on the way. I want you to be encouraged this morning. A move. A move of God is on the way. We're going to trust in him. A move, of God. a move of God is on the way. Even when I can't see him. A move of God. A, a move, move of God, God is on the way. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Amen, amen. I know y'all got something good y'all getting ready to sing. I just feel it in my spirit. I thought, I, I thought y'all were, y'all go ahead and sing. Y'all give us another song. As, as, uh, as Reverend Will Geist would say, go ahead and sing a little while. 
and then we'll be back up to preach. Amen. Plus, y'all done church me too hard anyway. I got to catch my breath for a minute. So y'all, y'all go ahead and do your thing. <laughs> Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Yes, yes, yes it is. Where the spirit yes. of the Lord is, the captives are set free. The wounded are made whole. Yes, yes. There is rest for your soul. Where the spirit is, oh, where the spirit is, where the spirit is, there is liberty. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Where the spirit of the Lord is, the captives are set free. The wounded are made whole. Find rest for your soul. Where the spirit is, 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 there is liberty, there is liberty. Where the spirit say, where the spirit of the Lord is. Of the Lord is. How many of you know there's liberty? There is he inhabits liberty. the praises of his people. Where the spirit say, where the spirit of the Lord is. The, Lord is. the captives are set free. He can release some chains in your life. Free. The wounded are made whole. The I can find rest for your soul. Find rest yeah. for your soul. Where the spirit is. Where the spirit is. I'm looking for your spirit today. Where your spirit is. Where the spirit is. Anybody need the Lord's spirit on the day? Where the spirit where is. The spirit I need is. your spirit, Lord. Where the spirit is. Where the spirit is. I know I can find salvation. Salvation. Yeah, where the spirit is. Where the spirit is. If you need to be saved, you can find salvation. 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 Yeah. Where the spirit is. Where the spirit is. If you're sick in your body, there is healing. There is healing. Anybody need healing on this morning? Where the spirit is. Where the Heal me, oh God, and make me new. There's healing. There is healing. I need your healing. I need your healing hand. Where the spirit is. Yeah. And there's peace. There, there is, is peace. There's peace. Where the spirit is. Where the spirit is. Anybody, anybody need some peace in your life? There's peace. There peace. 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 Where the spirit is, where the spirit is, and just in case you don't feel love, there is love. There is love. Yeah. Where the spirit is, where the spirit is, unconditional love. There is love. There is love. He'll give it to you. He'll give it to you. And just in case you're depressed, there is joy. There is joy. Yes. Where the spirit is, the spirit he can give you joy. He can give you joy. There is joy. 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 When you want to give up, when you want to throw in the towel, there is joy. Joy. Where the spirit is. He can give it to you. There is joy. There is joy. Yeah. 
Let the Spirit is. Where the Spirit is. Pastor, somebody in this season that's going through. And they just need some joy. Somebody might need some peace on today. Life can happen to us and sometimes we can't control. But if we look to the hills from which cometh our help, he'll give you joy. He'll give you peace. He'll even give you understanding. Where the spirit is. Where the spirit is. Where the spirit is. There is liberty. There is liberty. Oh, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah, yes. Father, we come to you today. Thanking you for your precious Holy Spirit. Sweet Holy Spirit, sweet heavenly dove. Stay right here with us, filling us with your love. And for these blessings, we'll lift our hearts in praise. For without a doubt, we know that we have been revived when we shall leave this place, Father. Now, God, I pray now that as your word goes forth, that it will fall on good soil that will produce an abundant crop, God, and the people that are here today and that are watching us online will be blessed. And it's in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let all God's people say amen. 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 I want you to turn with me in your Bibles today to the 19th chapter of Luke. Amen. The gospel according to St. Luke, the 19th chapter. Amen. amen. We're going to, we, we took a little break from our Christ Encounters series, but we're going to go jump right back into it. And I believe this is part seven that we're doing today. Luke chapter 19. And I want to read verses 1 through 10 for our hearing today. Luke chapter 19, verses 1 through 10. And when you have it, say amen. 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 If you don't mind, would you please stand as we prepare to read from the word of God today. Amen. Amen. Verse 1. Then Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. Now behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, who was a chief tax collector, and he was rich. And he sought to see who Jesus was, but could not because of the crowd, for he was of short stature. So he ran ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was going to pass that way. And when Jesus came to that place, he looked up and saw him. And said to him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must stay at your house. So he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. But when they saw it, they all complained, saying, he is gone to be a guest with a man who is a sinner. Verse 8, then Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, look, Lord, I give half of my goods to the poor. And if I've taken anything from anyone by false accusation, I restore fourfold. And Jesus said to him, today salvation has come to this house because he also is a son of Abraham. For the son of man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. Today I want to preach from the subject, a little man and a big God. A little man and a big God. I solicit your prayers today and your witness. So good to see those of you all who are gathered here in the sanctuary with us on this, the Lord's day. This is a good number. This is a good number. Amen. Amen. Have you ever just thought about people that you've encountered in life who seem to have everything that the world could offer? I mean, they just look like they're just walking in all kinds of favor. They have all the money they could possibly want. They have all the cars they could possibly want. They live in some of the greatest houses. They go on big, lavish trips. You're scrolling down 
your Facebook or your Instagram timeline, it seems like every other week they're taking a vacation. They're not just going up to the country. They're going out of the country. They're going to Belize and to Barbados and to the Bahamas and taking cruises and just everywhere you look, it just seems like everything is just going so well with them. And we often look at people like this uh, as being successful. Uh, and some fact, uh, as a matter of fact, I can't speak for you, but I can speak to, for myself and say that there have been times when I've hated on some folks that had that, well, they had that perception about them because in my mind, they had more than what I had. As a matter of fact, I remember back uh, when my wife and I first got married, we used to uh, always go and drive through a lot of these nice neighborhoods. And, and we would see all these nice, big old, huge houses. Even now, we still drive through, we see all these nice houses. And it could be on a Sunday afternoon or on a Sunday morning. And here we are, living in our one-bedroom apartment, on our getting dressed, on our way to church to go serve the Lord to go bring our tithe and our offering and just to go and just be a good Christian, trying to live paper Bible saved, just, just going out there and just, you know, trying to do things for the kingdom of God. But yet these other folks on a Sunday morning, Stefan, washing their cars, cutting the grass, doing stuff that we normally do on Saturday, they're doing on Sunday morning, going uh, to, to the grocery store, going to the mall, just basically doing whatever they want to do, almost like if they work a five-day work week, it's almost like they have two Saturdays because they have Saturday and Sunday to do whatever they want to do. And that kind of bothered me for a moment because in my mind, in our minds, we thought that they had more than what we had. And if you look at our text today, church, we'll see this man by the name of Zacchaeus. And he was really one of those types of people who had it all. Amen. The Bible tells us he was rich, and he also had power, and he also had a position. And I'm sure that there were many people who were in Jericho and in the surrounding vicinity who would have loved to switch places with Brother Zacchaeus. But, but what I want us to understand today as we read the text that there is something about Zacchaeus, or more to him rather, than, than what really meets the eye. Because although he was rich, although he had power, although he had a position, there was still something that was missing in his life. But when he had this encounter with Jesus, we'll see here later on in the text that his need was met completely. And as I think back to when I was driving around those neighborhoods, um, Sister Charles, and looking at those big old houses and, and wondering why I'm struggling and why I can barely afford to pay my bills, I'm serving the Lord faithfully, and these other folk just living their best life and just going on and doing whatever they want to do, got all the money, I mean, just sleeping in money. But sometimes the Holy Spirit will stop you and say, have you ever thought about the fact that they have all of this, but they don't have me? If you, want to, if you want to know the truth about it, I want y'all to think about some church. Think about this. You very seldomly hear of poor folks committing suicide. You very seldomly hear of poor folks having all these drug addictions and taking all these different things to try to go to sleep and all of that kind of stuff because, uh, uh, see, poor folks, you know, see, many, I ain't going to say poor folks, but many people who might not be uh, in that upper income bracket know that we have somebody who's greater than the upper income bracket. But yet these folk have relied on their money and their power and their wealth for so long that they don't depend on the God that gave them the wealth. They're too busy looking at their pocketbooks and not the holy book. And because they're looking at their pocketbooks and not the holy book, if the money starts looking a little funny, Latonya, then they just lose their minds. They get to just having like a nerve, they have nervous breakdowns and, and all that kind of stuff. You look at all the money that Prince had. Prince was, you look at all the money that Michael Jackson had. You look at all of these, the wealth and the riches that they accumulated over the years, but yet something in their life was still missing. 
And church, I'm here to admonish to us today that I don't care what you accomplish. I don't care how much you accumulate. I don't care whether you live uh, in River Oaks or Sunnyside. Let me tell you something, church. If you don't have Christ in your life, I know I no matter how much money you have, no matter what position you're working in, things will not pan out the way they should. But I want to look here at Zacchaeus here in the text because we see something here, uh, some things here that, that, I, that really struck out to me as I studied this text. And the first thing uh, we see here in the text as I get into the message is we see that Zacchaeus, uh, he was a pursuing sinner. We see a pursuing sinner. Here it is in the text, verses 1 through 4. Uh, we see already that Zacchaeus had prominence and he had power. The Bible tells us he was the chief tax collector. That means he was a tax collector over all the other tax collectors. And see, what happened here with Zacchaeus and what his position was is he did the bidding and he hired somebody else to collect the money. And for example, if Rome charged 5%, Zacchaeus may charge 10%. So, you know, he wanted, to, he wanted to charge this so he could go ahead and get his cut off of the people. And so we see here that, and, and usually when people have a lot of power and when they're rich like that, we also see that a lot of folks fear him. They, they fear because of his position. And many times, you know, and, and again, the Bible talks about him being a short man. We're going to talk about that in a minute. But many times we have a mindset that when we see folks who got a whole bunch of stuff, we feel like, oh, God, you know, they got a whole lot of influence. I got to suck up to them. Because, see, if, see, I suck up to them because, see, I know if I suck up to them, I can get ahead in life. Let me tell y'all something, church, and this ain't even in my notes. It ain't even in my message. You don't have to suck up to nobody because of what they got. I don't care how high up in the position they're in, you don't have to kiss up to nobody. And I'm going to tell y'all right now, yes, I've met a lot of powerful people. I've met a, lot, I've met a lot of powerful preachers and pastors, folks who can possibly get me on a great platform one day. I praise God. I thank God for them. But let me tell you something. I ain't sucking up to none of them. I don't kiss no... Well, okay, let me stop. Let me, let me, let me. I don't kiss up to anybody. Let me just say it like that. Let me, let me just say that. All right, all right. But, but, but even Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus, come on, Zacchaeus, yeah. But even with Zacchaeus' power, he still had a problem. And you know folks who got a problem. See, watch this. See, see let me tell y'all, let me tell y'all. See, see in, in verse 3 in the text, we see here that he thought to see, uh, was Zacchaeus, rather, he, he wanted to see Jesus, but because of his physical statue, he couldn't see him. He's a little bitty rascal. He couldn't see Jesus. He had to. So, so, so we see that, that, that he had this problem that he was short. And no, this is not a make fun of the short people message, okay? So I don't want y'all to think that. I'm just, I'm just preaching from the text. Zacchaeus was a short man. But let me tell y'all something. Many of us are six foot two and six foot three, and we still have some issues. Because even though we're tall and you see over a whole bunch of other folks, we're missing some other stuff which allows us not to see. Let me help you with something. See, see, this is an example of how our personal problems can hinder us from seeing the Lord. And many of us, just like Zacchaeus, we're trying to see the Lord. We want to see him, but many of us have a bunch of crowds in our lives that try to hinder us from seeing the Lord. Some of y'all live in a house right now with a crowd that will try to hinder you from seeing the Lord. Many of us, uh, we deal with uh, 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 sins and, and, and sometimes ourselves, you know, our own uh, setbacks that cause us to not see the Lord. We, we, we're looking, we're trying to get to the Lord, but yet every time we try to get to him, we got to deal with the crowd. The crowd that says, you ain't got to go to church. Well, wow, let's go fishing this, this weekend. We ain't got to go to church. Let's go to the casino this weekend. We, we ain't we're going to go to brunch. We, you tell pastor you ain't going to be there that we're going to brunch. Oh, you know, we're not going to watch the online service today. Well, I, I'll play it in the car, but I'm a halfway pass. I just want to put on there so pastor can see my name pop up, you know. So, so, so yeah, that, that's, that's the crowd I'm talking about. Oh, don't y'all sit up here and look at me like you don't know about that crowd. You know, some of y'all been dealing with the crowd for the last almost a whole year since we've been in this pandemic. You got the phone right there. You got the, 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 the Wi-Fi is working. Everything is good. But that crowd will say, you know what? Let's go do this. Uh, let's go do that. Girl, we're going to do a, a Zoom with the family, you know, since we can't get together. And, and we're going to just hang out and have a good time this Sunday. That's what I call the crowd. That crowd that tells you, baby... 
Sisters that cry to tell you, that brother say, baby, we ain't got to get married. I tell you what, why don't, what's, when is your lease up? I tell you what, I tell you what, when your lease is up, you can move in with me. I'll pay all the bills. We ain't getting married, though. I just, I just want to be able to, to take care of you. That, that, that the crowd will say, girl, you know you got bills, right? And you know that little, uh, that little $5 an hour job you got ain't really helping. You know you got all these kids that you need to take care of. You better let, let that man take care of you. You know, my mama used to tell me, let me tell you, you know, you don't move no woman into your house until you make her your wife. See, that, that, see we, we don't teach and preach about stuff like that no more. Y'all, boy, y'all, oh, y'all, oh, y'all getting quiet in here. I'm trying to help us to understand about that crowd because, let me tell you, just like in the text, that crowd will stop you from getting to where God wants you to be. And I'm not going to be the one that's going to let a crowd stop me from getting where God needs me. The crowd will tell you it's okay to steal. It's okay to hook and crook. It's okay to get on the phone and talk bad about this person. It's okay to go ahead and tell all their business even though they told you not to say that that's what the crowd would do and we got to be careful not to allow the crowd to hinder us from seeing Jesus yeah he had to deal with that crowd he was short and he had to deal with that crowd but what I like about Zacchaeus was he was willing to do whatever he needed to do to see Jesus. And he didn't care how silly or ridiculous that he looked. Let me tell y'all something. I remember when I was growing up, um, you know, I would, you know, when you sit at the table, uh, I, was, I was little. I was, I was little. So in order for me to sit to where I could get my food and look at my plate and eat, I had to sit on some phone books. Now, I'm telling my age now because many of y'all don't know nothing about that. See, they didn't have booster seats. Back in, you know, back in the early, in the, in the 70s. Boy, y'all, oh boy. They didn't, they didn't have no boosters. See, you had to sit on phone books in order to eat. And even as I got a certain age, family members come up, well, you know, you boy, you still sitting on them phone books? I look really silly sitting on these phone books. Well, the holidays are rolling around. Thanksgiving, Christmas, house full of company. Guess what? I'm still sitting on the phone books. And, and, and the reason why I was sitting on the phone books is because it was easier for me to eat while sitting on the phone books. Yeah, I looked silly, but I still sat on the phone books. And even though I was on the phone books, I still ate because I had, there was something I was trying to do. There was a goal that I was trying to accomplish, and I couldn't do it just sitting in the regular seat. I needed some help to kind of boost me up so I could get what I needed from the table. And I didn't care who talked about me. I didn't care about my cousins roasting me. I didn't care about my uncle saying, boy, you too big for that. I didn't care about somebody saying, boy, you look stupid. You were sitting on them phone books because there was something I needed. And just like there was something that I needed at that time, so keep had something that he needed. He needed to see Jesus. So what he said was, I don't care how stupid I look getting up on this tree. I'm going to climb this tree because I got to get to Jesus. Preach, Davis. I'm doing the best I can. You don't believe me? Come here, a woman with the issue of blood. Jesus was pressing his way through the crowd. And here this woman is trying to get to Jesus. And here she is. Now everybody else is in the crowd. Here she is down there. And all she had to do was touch the hem of his garment. Yeah, in order to touch the hem of his garment, I'm sure most likely she was on the ground, which is probably one of the lowest places you could get. But she had something that she needed. And when you have something that you need, you can say, you know what? Whatever it takes to get to Jesus, I'm going to do it. I'll beg. I'll crawl. I'll roll on the floor. I look stupid, but I've got to get to Jesus. I don't care what you think about me. I don't care how you look at me. I don't care if you think I look ridiculous. I don't care if you take pictures of me all on the ground and, and climbing up on a tree and putting them up on social media. I don't care about that because right now it's not about how I look. It's about what I need. Preach, Davis. He needed something. He needed something. He was pursuing. He was a pursuing sinner. But watch this. Not only was he a pursuing sinner, but we see here that we have a perceptive Savior. A perceptive Savior. Here it is in the text, verse 5. It's right here in the text. It says, he looked, and, and when Jesus came to that place, he looked up and saw him. 
and said to him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down for today. I must come and stay at your house. See, see, here in verse 6, we see that Zacchaeus obeyed the Lord's call and joyfully uh, gave himself to Jesus. But before he did that, before he did that, see, he realized that Jesus called him out. He called him out. He, he said, hey, hey, man, look, hey, Zacchaeus, Zach, Zach, hey, Zach. Here's the kids come. Zach, crowd, everybody. Zach, hey, hey, say, dude, bro, say, c c c hey, man, hey, hurry up and get, man, dude, hurry up and get off that tree. I'm coming, to, I'm coming to your house today. We, we gonna kick, go, get off that tree. Come on, go ahead, get the crab legs together. Hey, man, get, the, we gonna have crawfish boil, whatever. Come on, we gonna hang, I'm gonna hang out with you today. I'm inviting myself to your, you ever somebody who invite themselves to your house? I'm, th Josh, Josh, hey, Josh, 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 hey, 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 hey. Look, hey, get the crab legs together. Hey, I'm after church. I'm, 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 I'm kicking it with you and the family after church. Y'all go ahead and get everything together. I know you ain't told your wife yet, but I'm, I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. That, that, that's, that's what was going on here. That's what was going on. He said, get down from that tree for, because today I'm coming to your house. But this is what blessed me, y'all. This is what blessed me, Carla. Because, see, we see that although Jesus knew what kind of person Zacchaeus was, he still had compassion for him. Woo! Aren't you glad? But see, let me tell y'all something. See, we get all upset about folk talking about what they heard about us, but aren't you glad that Jesus knows us even because it's even after stuff that he knows about us? Not that he heard, it's stuff that he knows. And let me tell y'all something. I can't speak for you, but I can speak for me. Sometimes I wonder how in the world could the Lord love me, knowing what kind of person that I was, knowing the kind of struggles that I have, knowing the kind of things that I deal with. How dare me uh, sit around and have this attitude like I deserve for Jesus to do everything. I deserve to have him at my house. Aren't you glad today that Jesus will still love you and he'll still be there for you no matter what? you have done oh I praise God for that church he had compassion on him and here's my thing how come Jesus can have compassion on the sinner but yet we can't have compassion on him? oh my God oh my God you let somebody in the church mess up you let somebody in leadership mess up Instead of showing compassion, I'm, I'm not talking about paradise, I'm talking about the church down the street. You let somebody mess up, and the next thing you know, the first thing we do is, I can't believe they did. They supposed to be this, that, and the other. He's supposed to be a deacon. She's supposed to be a usher. They supposed to be this and that. You've been singing in the choir all these years, and you've been having all that going on. I just don't even see, you know what, I don't even fool with folk like that. If she called me, I ain't even talking to her no more. And it's, a, it's sad that many of us stop talking to folk and fooling with folk because of something somebody else told us they heard about them. Oh, we might not shout today, Marcus. I don't think we, I, I might not be able to close this thing like that today because I'm, tr I'm trying to get to your heart today. We, we, here we are. We want to sit up here and pontificate like we got it all together. But I told y'all a few weeks ago, you better learn how to stay as close to the ground as possible because guess what? When you do fall, you ain't got far to go. Preach, man. Yes, so here, 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 here. So Jesus says, hey, Zacchaeus, Zach, Zach, get out of the tree. I'm coming to your house. Yeah, I know what they're saying about you. Yeah, I know you've been cheating the folks. I, I know I, I know what's going on, but I want to come hang out with you. And right now, many of us who are sitting here or watching us today, right now, the Lord is seeking to visit many of us. And he's looking for more than just a physical place to visit he, for a day. But what he wants is a heart that he can live in for a lifetime. He's not saying, I just want to come kick it with you for a couple of hours and I'm going on about my business. He wants to come and settle in your heart, not just today, not just tomorrow, not just next week, but he wants to settle himself in your your heart forever. He's knocking at somebody's door, but the question is, are you going to let him in? He's calling somebody to get out the tree, but the question is, are you going to obey and get out the tree and go spend some time with Jesus? I'm trying to help us today to know that we have a Savior who seeks us out. No matter what we've done, no matter how raggedy of a life we've lived, no matter who we done cheated and messed over, he's still seeking to save us. Why? Because he has compassion for us and he loves us. Let me move on here because not only do we see 
a pursuing sinner. And not only do we see a perceptive Savior, watch this, we see a phenomenal salvation. A phenomenal salvation. Verses 6 through 10, here it is. Here it is. In verse 6, he obeyed the Lord's call and joyfully gave himself to Jesus, regardless of how the crowd felt about it. And see, you can't read over stuff too fast because look, here it is in the text. The crowd said, verse 7, they said, but when they saw it, they talked about him. You're right. They all complained, saying, he is going to be with a guest, with a man. He's going to be a guest with a man who is a sinner? Oh, he hanging out with, with him. Man, he, he want to go to his house? Man, this dude, this dude, man, he done lied and stole all this money. And yet he's still going to go hang out with him? This dude got women in every area cold in, this, in the city. He got, he in every time zone, he got a baby mama in every time zone. And he want to hang out with him. This girl got five babies and six baby daddies. And he want to hang out with her. This dude drink like a fish. Smoke so much weed when you walk in his house, you get the munchies. Oh, y'all didn't think I knew about that. But yet you want to hang out with, with the man. You, you, man, you know this, as much as she gossip, as much as she likes to set folk up and take screenshots and, and put it on social media, you going to hang out with her? Okay, I can't talk about, okay, I'm going to talk about me. As much as bad as Trey used to cuss all the time, Notice I said, used to cuss all the time. I don't cuss as much as I did before. But anyway, notice he, he want to hang out with Trey. The man, Trey, the boy, he was in college and ran through so many women. He want to hang out with him. Oh, come on, y'all. Y'all need to come on. Let's keep it real today. Because guess what? I ain't the only one in here who got that testimony. Thank you, my brother. Ah, so, so you want to hang out with this dude? Man, look at this. Because, you know, many of us, man, let me tell y'all, let me say, many of us, uh, when, if I come down after church and say, you know what, I'm going to get, I'm just using you for an example, Tiff. I ain't, I ain't talking about you, okay? All right, all right me and Lady D, we're we going to invite Tiffany over to our house after church today. She's going to hang out with us, okay? Even those of us who we love Tiff, she's a good, she's a sweet girl. But you're going to think of something bad to say about it. Why? Because of the fact that we chose to hang out with her and not somebody. I'm just trying to help us to understand something today. That no matter how rough your past is, no matter how many people you screwed over in your life, you have a Savior who wants to hang out with you. Yeah, yeah. So that was his choice. All these folk in this crowd, Marcus. All these folk. And he wanted. to... Man, whatever. Get on social media and start throwing shade. Y'all know how we do. But, let, but let's keep looking at the text here because I'm almost done. I'm almost done. In verse 8, watch this, watch this. In verse 8, this is what I love about Zacchaeus. He repented of his sins. Okay, notice, yeah, we talked about the sin and we laughed and joked a little bit. But notice Zacchaeus repented for what he did that was wrong. He confessed but not only did he confess, but he changed. Remember, remember, 1 John 1, 9 tells us if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Yeah, we got to confess. But don't just confess, but you got to change. You got to change, just like in 2 Corinthians 5, 17. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are new. Zacchaeus didn't just stop at the confession, but he had to go ahead and go to the change. Yeah, he didn't just stop and saying, Lord, I messed over these folk. Okay, yeah, all right, I know, yeah. Yeah, I did it. And that's it. I did it. I did it. I did it. But he said, you know what? He said, no, we're not going to stop there. But I'm not just going to just admit that I did it. But I need to make some changes in my life. And as a result of his confession, Zacchaeus was redeemed. And we see in verse 9, we see the mercy of Christ. Jesus took this little short, wicked man. And he saved him 
forever. And then verse 10, we see the mission of Christ. When Jesus reminds us that just like he saved the sinner then, he can still save now. We read all the time by John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoso believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. But many times we forget to read verse 17, Sister McGinry, because it says, For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. So if Jesus is not condemning, why should I? If Jesus did not condemn me, why should I condemn somebody else? Because here this man had admitted, yes, I, I did this, but guess what? All those people that I stole from, those people that I took from, I'm going to go ahead and restore it for, for folks. I'm not just going to give them back uh, what I took from them, but I'm going to give them even more than that. Church, I've got to understand that we serve a phenomenal Savior, and he gives us a phenomenal salvation. But let me close by saying this. Because many of us, I talked earlier about folks who think they have it all together. And many of us think that we have it all together. Yeah, I'm happy, man. Yeah, I'm happy. I'm successful. I'm living my best life. And I ain't going back and forth with nobody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, you know, you know, and I know that deep down inside, something is missing. And if you know that deep down inside something is missing, I want to suggest to you today that Jesus is the element that you need to fulfill that, vo to fill that void in your life. Amen. Here Jesus is, just like he was passing by. And Zacchaeus got on the tree to see him. He's passing by many of your houses right now. He's passing in your neighborhood right now. He's passing through this sanctuary right now because he's trying to look for somebody who he can save. He, people talking about, oh, I, I, you know, I, I saw, I found Jesus. Baby, you didn't know where to look. The truth of the matter is Jesus found us when we were in our low and dirty and sinful state. Can I get a witness here? And we see here, and let me tell you all something, and regardless, once again, to, to how low you may have been, he will still save you. And again, Zacchaeus didn't care about the court of public opinion. He didn't care how folks saw him. He didn't care how ridiculous he looked climbing on that tree. He knew that there was an encounter that he needed that was going to change his life forever. And many of us need that same kind of encounter today. Many of us need that same kind of experience today. And let me tell you all something. This has nothing to do with going to church. Because many of us have been in church 20, 30, and 40 years, and we still haven't had that Zacchaeus experience. We still haven't had that kind of Christ encounter where Christ says, today I'm going to eat at your house. I don't know about you, but I want Christ to eat at my house. I want him to come over and eat some crab legs with me. I want him to come over and have a crawfish boil with me. I want him to come over and spend some time with me. because Not because I just deserve it. Not because I think I'm all that. But I know that he has something that I need. And I know that he can fill whatever void it is in my life. Church, let me tell you as I close, I don't care what you might be missing. I don't care what you might feel that you don't have in your life. Let me tell y'all, you can't find it in your mama. You can't find it in your daddy. You can't find it in your husband. You can't find it in your wife. You can't find it uh, in your homegirls and your homeboys. You can't find it in a sugar daddy. You can't find it at the strip club. The only place you can find it is in Jesus. And don't you know when Jesus hang out with you, you ain't got to hide nothing. When Jesus hang out with you, you ain't got to put a sock on the door. When Jesus hang out with you, you don't have to, uh, he, he don't have to park your car down the street so don't nobody know where you are or try to get in a different car so won't nobody recognize you because when Jesus comes and hangs out he comes to change your life what a wonderful change in my life has been wrought since Jesus came into my heart is there anybody glad that you got Jesus in your heart oh I wish somebody helped me close this message is there anybody here who's glad that you have Jesus uh, I, I'm reminded of that song that, that, uh, that the Canton Spirituals uh, sings it says glad I got Jesus down in my heart glad I got peace down in my heart you know uh, people always talk about no Jesus that mean N-O Jesus no peace N-O peace but you can also say no Jesus K-N-O-W Jesus and no peace K-N-O-W peace and I don't know about you but I gotta know some peace I gotta have some peace in my life and in my heart and if I gotta climb on a tree 
I'm going to get me some peace. If I got to look out the window, I'm going to get some peace. If I got to sit on some phone books, I'm going to get some peace because I know Jesus is my peace. In fact, he is the peace that surpasses all understanding. I might not know a lot of things right now, but all I know is if I have Jesus in my heart. All I know is I have to have Jesus in my life. All I know is if I have Jesus in my circle, he will give me peace. Is there anybody here that thanks God for the peace that Jesus gives? Or is there anybody here who might not have that peace? And if you need some peace right now, peace is made available to you. Can I get a witness here? But if you already know Jesus, and if you already know he'll bring you peace, I need you to do me one favor. I need you to help me close this message I need you to stand to your feet right now and I want you to give God praise and thank him for the peace that you have give God some glory here and praise him for the peace that you have because he said peace I give to you it's not the world's kind of peace but it's a God kind of peace because the peace that the world has the world can take it away but I'm so glad that the peace that God gives through Jesus Christ can't be taken away this joy that I have the world didn't give it and the world can't take it away this peace that I have the world didn't give it and the world can't take it away so I'm here to let you know no matter how small you might feel no matter how insignificant might feel you serve a God that's a big God and I thank God that one day I was a little man I wasn't a little man in stature, but I was a little man in spirit. I was a little man in self-esteem. I was a little man in every other area of my life. But I thank God that one day I met a great big God. And when I met a great big God, he showed me a better way. He showed me a better life. He showed me a better future. And there's somebody here right now. You're looking uh, for a better way. Uh, you're looking uh, for a better life. Uh, you're looking uh, for a better future. Uh, if I, you're not too cute uh, and you're not too ashamed, uh, I want you to look at somebody. Uh, don't touch them, but look at them uh, and say, neighbor, uh, I see you uh, in the future. Uh, and you look better uh, than you do right now. Uh, I see you in the future and you look more prosperous than you do right now I see you in the future and you look healthier than you do right now because Jesus came to live in your life who am I talking about I'm talking about Jesus I'm talking about the king of kings I'm talking about the lord of lords I'm talking about the great I am talking about the prince of peace who came through uh, 42 generations, walked the earth uh, for 33 and a half years, and one day uh, some folk got tired of him. So what they decided to do uh, was to lie on him uh, and spit on him and arrest him and hang him on a whole rugged cross. They put nails in his hand. They put rivets in his feet. They pierced his side. They dropped him lower and he died on that cross. They laid him in Joseph's borrowed tomb and he stayed there on the first day. He stayed there on the second day but aren't you glad that early I wish I had some help, help here say early one Sunday morning the angel rolled a stone away and he got up with all power in his hand and because he got up I can run and not be weary because he got up I can walk and not faint because he got up I can live to face tomorrow good evening paradise may the Lord bless you real good but before I go to my seat I got three questions for you question number one is do you know him 
Question number two is, have you tried him? Question number three is, won't he do it? Won't he make a way out of no way? Won't he turn your midnight into day? Won't he make your enemies leave you alone? Don't the Lord all right? Ain't the Lord all right? If you know he's all right, I need you to do me another favor. Look at somebody else and say, neighbor, I might not know Greek. Say, neighbor, I might not know Hebrew. Say, neighbor, I might not know Swahili. But one thing I know is I know he's all right. I know he's all right. I, I know he's all right. Say it. Say it. Say it. Oh, he's all right. See, I don't have to stay a little man. Because I know I serve a big God. And even if, even if, even if I had to climb a tree to see Jesus. No, he didn't say, notice the text, didn't say anything about him touching Jesus. Did y'all notice that? He just wanted to see Jesus. And because, Ronnie, he wanted to see Jesus, I'm even more thankful that Jesus saw him. And told him once again, Zach, Zach, come on. Hurry up and get out that tree. Because today, we're going to kick it at your house. And there's somebody here today, you're just like Zacchaeus. You're on that tree trying to seek Jesus. And guess what? He's on the ground trying to seek you. And I want to give you the same invitation that Jesus gave Zacchaeus. I want to extend the invitation for you to have Jesus to come and spend some time at your house. In this case, to spend eternity in your heart. You might be watching today and you say, well, Pastor, I don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ. You can get to know him today in a real and a personal way. And if you know that's you, I want you to put in those comments. I want you to email us at info at paradisembc.org and let us know. I need salvation. I need somebody to pray with me to receive Christ. And somebody's going to pray with you to receive Christ and give you the plan of salvation and the next steps. Also, you might be watching and you might uh, have, have been in a backslidden state for a while. You, you got saved as a kid, but yet now you're in a position to where you just kind of felt like you've fallen out of fellowship. Once again, Jesus is right there looking at you, seeking you, wanting to come back and wanting you to come back and wanting you to rededicate your life to him. Also, you might be watching and you might say, well, I'm saved, but I don't have a church home. We want to invite you to be a part of this church family, this fellowship. Paradise Missionary Baptist Church is, I believe, the greatest church on this side of heaven. And we have some people who will genuinely love you and genuinely accept you and genuinely embrace you as a part of our family. If that's you, we want you to just let us know with one of those codes that you want to either get saved, rededicate your life, join the church, or if you just simply want prayer, you can put in the comments you need prayer, and somebody's going to reach out to you and pray with and for you. As the music department comes now and ministers, we want to give you that opportunity to accept Christ, rededicate your life, join the church, or request prayer. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord until I die. I
Lord until I die. Oh, yes, I'm going to watch, fight, and pray. I'm going to watch, fight, and pray. I'm going to watch, fight, and pray until I die. Oh, yes, I'm going to watch, fight, and pray. I'm going to watch, fight, and pray. I'm going to watch, fight, and pray until I die. Oh. my bended knees I'm going to stay on my bended knees I'm going to stay on my bended knees until I die oh yes I will I'm going to stay on my bended knees I'm stay on my bended knees I'm going to stay on my bended knees until I, I die Amen. We have a special prayer request from Sister Marlo Thomas Amen. Church, if you don't mind, we just bow your heads for a moment with me as we pray my dear sister. Father, we thank you right now Father, first of all, we thank you in advance for hearing our prayer Lord, we lift up Sister Marlo Thomas to you in a special way, God. Lord, whatever it is that she is seeking prayer for, God, we might not know, God, but we know that you know. And we know that you have the answer to her need. Lord, we know that just like Zacchaeus sought out and he had a need, God, we know that she has a need. And Lord, we pray right now that you're going to, we thank you in advance, God, that you're going to meet her need. God, bless her, bless her family. God, bless all things that concern her, Father. And, Lord, I pray that, Lord, once you've intervened in her situation, God, that she's going to have a testimony that she's going to share with others, God, about your goodness, your grace, and your mercy. And we thank you in advance, and we call it done right now. And it's in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let all God's people say amen. 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 Well, it is ours to offer. It is yours to accept or to reject. Amen. Amen. Let's give God another hand clap of praise. Amen. Amen. I don't know exactly where God is going to take us next Sunday as we deal, um, deal with these Christ encounters, but y'all, this is probably one of the most, I've actually had fun studying this. I mean, just, just awesome. This is some of the most enjoyable preaching I've done in years. So if I get a little loose and excited, y'all just got to forgive me. Amen. Amen. But, you know, my pastor used to always tell me, if you ain't passionate about something, you don't need to be preaching. If you're not passionate about God's word, you shouldn't be preaching to nobody. Amen. And I'm passionate about the word of God. I'm passionate about studying. I'm passionate about preaching and teaching. And I'm passionate about listening to other people preach and teach. Amen. 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 And we have some great, awesome teaching arms in this church. When I say Amen. that, Amen. that means Bible study and Amen. Sunday school. Amen. 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 If you're missing Sunday school church, you're missing some awesome teaching. Minister Amen. Geis. Did an awesome job this morning. All of our Sunday school teachers do a great amen, job every amen. week blessing us. Y'all got to get on that Zoom, church. Amen. 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 I think Deacon Raymond said is we got 40 people in the building today. Amen. Like 40 people. So so we need to at least get 40 people on the Zoom for Sunday school. I mean, for yeah, I think I think we can do it. Amen. Amen. Well, church, it is time to give. Amen. amen. Oh my God. Amen. Church got quiet. It is time to give, amen. We're going to prepare to bring our tithe and our offering. Don't you know one of the greatest ways to be blessed financially is by obeying the word of God and bringing the tithe and the offering, amen. Bringing the tithe and the offering. And we're, uh, we admonish every last one of you all uh, online or in person, amen. We encourage you all to be consistent in your giving, amen. amen. Be consistent. That means don't hit and miss, but give consistently every week uh the frequency of your pay periods however you do it we encourage you all to give i know for me uh what i like to do is as soon as my direct deposit hits 
I just go ahead and bring the tithe right then. I don't wait till Sunday, Stefan. I do it right then. Amen. My wife does the exact same thing. I'm sure many of you all do the same thing. Amen. So we want to be obedient to God's word. And again, if this is not your week to tithe, we just ask you to sow a seed of at least $25. Amen. Amen, somebody. Amen. Amen. We want, and, and remember, the Bible tells us that God loves a cheerful giver. So Amen. as we're giving, we're not giving grudgingly. We're not giving with an attitude, but we're cheerful in our giving. Amen. 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 Our giving platforms should be on the screen. As you know, we have a, a quite a few of them. Amen. You go to paradisembc.org. Click on online giving. You can also, if you have the Easy Tithe app, if you don't have it, download Easy Tithe app. Type in Paradise Missionary Baptist Church. You can give there. If you choose to, those of y'all who are here, if you choose to give in person, we have deacons that will receive that at this time when we get ready to exit the doors. So there, once again, there are multiple ways of giving. Amen. And even Amen. if some folks just can't get out, you just need to write your check. We also have a P.O. box that you can send it to. It's on our church website. I don't want to say it right now because I don't remember what it is. But do the P.O. Don't do the 3605 Tangerine. Do the P.O. box. Amen. We're secure and we're safe. Amen. 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 You can find that on the church website. Amen. Amen. As you know, once again, um, as I know y'all heard a few amens in here. Our sanctuary is open at 25 percent. Amen. We're open at 25%, and I believe we still have room for, we almost know, we don't, we don't want to get too crazy. We had a good number right now. This is pretty good. We might could take a few more. Amen. 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 So there is a little bit of room left over for you all, and everyone in this sanctuary is wearing a mask. They are socially distant. We are checking temps. We are doing all those precautions. And I'm, I said this Wednesday night in Bible study, I, I posted, and I'm going to say it right here over this pulpit Sunday. The state of Texas does not govern Paradise Missionary Baptist Amen. Church. Amen. Amen. Governor Greg Abbott is not the pastor of Paradise Missionary Baptist Amen. Church. Amen. Amen. And the pastor of this house says that we will continue to wear masks until further notice. Amen. We will stay at 25% Amen. until further notice. Amen. Well, pastor, I got vaccinated. Why we, well, a lot of us getting vaccinated. Let me tell y'all something. That's good. Go ahead and get vaccinated. I encourage you to do that. But at the same time, we're going to be safe. We're going to we're going to uh, conduct our safe practices and we're going to continue to do it until the health experts say Amen. it's OK to increase our numbers. Amen. Amen. And we have some health professionals who are in our church right now. And right now I see people shaking their heads right now. Right. Pastor, no, it ain't time. Amen. Now, unless and if Sister Carla or Sister Gidry or Lucretia or somebody say, Pastor, I think we can loosen it a little bit, then we might do it. But right now we're just not going to do it. Amen. 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 Also, a uh, very special uh, prayer request we have. Want to be in special prayer for the Hayes family. Amen. Amen. That, um, that, that tragic shooting that took place. Amen. Want to be in special prayer for that family. They are in the process now of making arrangements. And uh, once we have all that information finalized, we'll let you know exactly um, how that's going to take place. Amen. 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 Also, make sure, those of you who are watching right now, uh, let's say you got on here late or something, you want to watch it later, uh, you can go not only just on Facebook, you can go to the YouTube channel. Amen. If you have not done so, let's like the church YouTube channel, Amen. Paradise Missionary Baptist Church. You'll see the church logo. Like the YouTube channel. We need to get at least 1,000 likes on our YouTube channel so we can start going live on Facebook and YouTube. Amen. Amen. So if you haven't done so, get your friends, your family, everybody. Let's like our YouTube channel. Let's get at least 1,000 subscribers. Amen. 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 We got to stay with the times, church. We got to stay with the times. Amen. Amen. Well, I believe that's all the announcements I have. So I'm going to turn it over to Brother Josh. And after that, we're going to prepare to dismiss. Amen. 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 Real quick, just a reminder that we are celebrating uh, Pastor David and his family on March 21st. Amen. I'm watching the friends. Let's give my hand. Let's give my hand. This is uh, the first year that Pastor and his family has been here at Paradise, and we're grateful to God for what they have done. We thank God for his ministry, and I'm just encouraging everyone to come out to celebrate. I'm not too sure about the percentage thing. We have the 25%. Okay, yeah, I caught that. All right. Uh, we will uh, definitely give more information on the 21st. Uh, we're going to have the 11 o'clock service, and we will be having a 3 o'clock service. Um, so out of those services, come out. We would love for y'all to come and support our, our pastor. Amen. Uh, we are still uh, accepting uh, so seeds to sow in the ministry of Pastor Davis and his family. Um, on the website, there are, there's a specific um, part. Uh, I can't get my words right. So drop down. There we go. On the website. Thank you, ladies. Um, for you to be able to contribute to the pastor's family. And then on his special day, we'll present him uh, with, with this gift. Amen? Amen. 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 Thank you.
amen, amen. All right, there we go. Amen. All right. Amen. Yeah, we're still, uh, even with the anniversary celebration, we'll still be at 25%. Um, all I ask you all, those, once again, who are able, please come out and just fellowship with us that day. Amen. 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 Again, I know we got, you know, not, well, past, that's two services. That's a lot. You know, we ain't done that in a while. Now, now, now the last time I checked, this was Paradise Missionary Baptist Church. So, you know, y'all know before COVID, we did uh, 11 o'clock and 3 o'clock service at least three, four times a year and outings and all that. Now, y'all, I have not preached out in a whole year. Well, I hadn't brought the church in a whole year. We have not had in, the last 3 o'clock service we had was my installation. Amen. So that's a whole year and a month have gone by. So y'all just, yeah, just make, make preparations. Come hang out with us. Bring a sack lunch or something. Oh, I'm trying to get, I'm here. Timmy, I'm trying to get some sponges to get some uh, shrimp po uh, pasta or something, some shrimp salad. That'll be good. That, 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 was a, that blessed my spirit last year. Amen. <laughs> Amen. All right, y'all. It's been a great day, y'all. Let's go home. I didn't mean to keep us in church this long. I'm sorry. All right, y'all. Let's stand. Oh, great day. It's been a great day. Oh, worship and praising. Great day. A great, day. great day. Whoa. Great day. Worship and pray. Great day. Oh, great day. Great. great day. It's been a great day. Great day. Whoa. Great day. Worship and praising. Great day. Great day. It's been a great day. Great day. Whoa. Great day. Worship and praising. Singing. Singing. Shouting. Shouting. And the word. Oh, God, we thank you for the tithe and the offering we've received, God. I pray that we use for the furthering of your kingdom. God, we ask you, bless those who gave, bless those who had the desire to give and did not have it. And, Lord, we pray that you would bless us indeed, that you would enlarge our territory, that your hand will be upon us, and that you would keep us from all evil. Grant unto us grace, peace, mercy, and safety as we go to our various destinations. And it's in Jesus' mighty name we pray. And let all God's people say amen. 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 Relationships. Relationships. Restoration. Renewal. Renewal. Paradise go. Paradise go. Paradise go. God bless you. You are dismissed. Oh, love. A great, day. great day, whoa, worship and praising at paradise, worship and praising at.